Welcome to this video series on mitigating RF descents for consumer electronics. Descents is high on the list of challenges faced by engineers designing wireless products. Miniaturization, faster digital signals, and more wireless systems within the same product compound the problem. These trends in the industry are causing engineers to demand a solution for descents. ANSYS EM tools can help engineers diagnose and mitigate the problem of RF descents and coexistence. In part one, we'll learn about radio frequency interference, RF descents, and coexistence. We'll discuss the minimum required components for a descents analysis, our simulation technique to characterize them, and power flow analysis used to quantify RFI and descents. A smartphone contains digital electronics and multiple radios within a small footprint. Each radio is tuned to receive a signal at a certain channel. A radio sensitivity represents the smallest signal power it can receive to perform its intended function. But when interference arrives at a receiver input, its sensitivity is degraded. This degradation in the receiver sensitivity is what we call descents. RF descents is commonly thought of as onboard interference from digital systems never intended to radiate. However, the source of descents doesn't discriminate. It could also stem from intentional transmitters. For example, the cellular radio communicating with a remote tower may inadvertently couple to the Wi-Fi radio desensitizing that system. The goal is to achieve seamless operation between all onboard radios. This is called RF coexistence. Therefore, regardless of digital systems or transceivers, we must consider all forms of RFI. This generic IoT board serves as a great example. It comprises a controller for video streaming and an antenna connected to a Wi-Fi microchip. This Wi-Fi chip, which has a built-in radio, is the victim receiver we're worried about. These traces comprise the clock signal to drive the controller and Wi-Fi chips. These traces transfer data between the controller and the connector, leading to an external system such as a camera or a storage device. This trace is transferring data between the controller and the Wi-Fi chip and could be streaming video or downloading data wirelessly over the internet. Without interference, the system performs according to specification and the target data rate is achieved, maintaining a high quality video stream. However, as the digital clock and the data signals are transmitted, unintended energy may appear at the antenna port, degrading the receiver's sensitivity. Consequently, the system operates at a lower data rate, producing poor picture quality. This means our IoT device no longer meets specification, all due to descents. ANSYS tools can identify and mitigate descents early in the design cycle, saving costly rework and avoiding delays in product launch. Subsequent parts of this video series describe the complete workflow. To prep the board for simulation, three ingredients are required. First is the aggressor spectra. Essentially, it's the amount of power at any given frequency regardless of emitter type. Spectra is often obtained by transforming a time-varying signal into the frequency domain. Spectra may have narrowband and broadband characteristics. Second is the coupling. This amounts to the quantity of power that exits the emitter and couples into the receive pin at the antenna port. It may comprise of conducted or radiated energy and may follow any number of paths. The final ingredient is the victim receiver that's exposed to interference. Aggressors can be represented in a number of ways. Behavioral models that characterize the power envelope is a great place to start. Digital systems could be periodic clocks or pseudo-random bit sequences that are simple to set up in EMIT. Transmitter models can include power level, fundamental, harmonics, and other parameters. EMIT has built-in libraries for many specification-based radios, such as Wi-Fi, Zigbee, or Bluetooth. EMIT allows for continuous enhancement as better data becomes available during the design process. So if a vendor IBIS model is available, it may be used in conjunction with the transient circuit analysis allowing the spectra to be extracted and used in lieu of the EMIT behavioral model. Once we know the spectra of the interfering signals, we assess how they couple to the various radios using physics-based 3D electromagnetic field solvers in ANSYS HFSS. This is done by extracting the S parameters, which characterizes the interfering power as it couples to the receive antenna. In this approach, any number of aggressors, regardless of type, may be considered as potential interference sources to any number of receivers on the device. Using HFSS, an accurate S-parameter matrix is obtained and considers all geometry and material effects throughout the volume. This may include characteristics of the PCB itself, such as dielectric layers and vias, as well as features associated with the integration like chassis, packaging, or shield cans. 
To characterize the receivers, we use EMIT's behavioral models. Think of receiver susceptibility as broadband vulnerability. The interfering power from each aggressor is evaluated at the receiver using this susceptibility model to calculate descents. Here we see how elements of a Bluetooth specification pertain to points on the susceptibility curve. Similarly, there are models for other radios included in EMIT's library. The aggressor spectra, coupling, and receiver susceptibility can all be combined in what we call a power flow analysis, resulting in an algebraic expression. By this convention, a positive margin indicates a potential problem. These are the possible margins for a number of narrowband and broadband interfering signals. Positive margins are shown in red, indicating that degradation may occur. Negative margins are shown in green, which is good. It quantifies in terms of power how much more interference a receiver can tolerate before degradation occurs. Desense is a special case of radio frequency interference that isolates the tuned channel and does not consider out-of-band interference concerns. Think of clear channel sensitivity as a fundamental property of the radio comprising the receiver noise floor and the required signal-to-noise ratio. In reality, the radio will operate in an environment where interfering signals are present. Noisy channel sensitivity defines the degraded sensitivity in the presence of these interfering signals. It accounts for any number of broadband and narrowband signals from any combination of aggressors. The difference between the clear and noisy channel sensitivity is desense. Tune in to part two for the workflow.